Hi and welcome to our Facebook live stream. We're here today at Baker Clinic Eye Specialist in Manitowoc, Wisconsin with Dr. Jordan King uh, talking about computer vision syndrome. Dr. King is an optometrist here at Baker Clinic Eye Specialist. She graduated from the Michigan College of Optometry at Ferris State University in Big Rapids, Michigan. Dr. King provides family eye care services including contact lens and optical for, for people of all ages. Uh, thank you for being with us today, Dr. King. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So before we get started, if you do have questions about computer vision syndrome or anything that Dr. King discusses um, today, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer your questions uh, live on camera. If we don't get a chance to, however, um, Dr. King will uh, answer your questions available online after the live broadcast. So let's get right into it. Okay. Let's talk about just what this actually means. So what is computer vision syndrome and maybe what, you know, causes it? Okay. Um, so computer vision syndrome is kind of a newer thing for people um, just based on the advances in technology in the past 20 years. Um, on average, people are spending 11 plus hours a day on digital devices and American workers are spending about seven, eight hours per day kind of on their computer at work. Um, because of this, it's kind of very straining on our eyes, and we often end up with eye fatigue and eye strain kind of at the end of the day after using these digital devices. Um, it's been estimated that roughly 85% of people after using a computer have some sort of computer vision syndrome symptoms, um, and typically after two hours of work, you have about a 90% chance of having at least something kind of pop up then, so. Interesting. So you you talked about just the amount of time that people on their devices mm -hmm. what is it about that that affects our vision so uh, our body has kind of this natural built-in reflex when we read up close um, what that is is our eyes naturally turn inward and downward and we also focus a little bit stronger that's typically why we like to hold our reading material kind of in that downward position because it's very natural for our eyes and also why if we have like a bifocal lens things like that the reading prescriptions kind of narrowed in a little bit. Um, when it comes to the computer itself, it's not set up for that natural viewing position. It's typically straight in front of us and sometimes even above us, so we have to look upward and we're not getting that natural down position. And also it's kind of set for that intermediate length where typical glasses don't cover that distance. So, so I want to talk about that a little when okay. we had mentioned glasses and just the way our typical reading glasses or bifocal lenses function. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you just explain that and how that works with maybe typical reading versus computer vision where we're looking at a computer screen? Like why the typical glasses don't work? Yeah. Okay, so there's kind of three main groups of glasses. Um, and the first one and the simplest one is going to be a single vision lens. That's what people typically relate glasses to where you put them on, you see great at the distance, everything's fine. Um, when we get a little bit older and we kind of lose our focusing system, single vision lenses can also be just a normal reading prescription, what people think of when they pick up like the over-the-counter cheaters at the store. Um, so as you can imagine from the term single vision, it's made for near or it's made for distance. It's not made for that intermediate zone, so it's either going to be too strong or too weak for what our eyes need for the computer. Um, the next type of lens, which I, we actually have diagrams for, Kind of half a lens here so this is a traditional bifocal lens obviously you'd have the second half to it <laughs> um but this is kind of that very common reading and distance prescription built into one for people that need that help with it the top half is distance the bottom half is that reading as you can imagine like we mentioned before there's nothing set up for that intermediate so it's either going to be too strong or too weak for what we're kind of looking for with the computer um, now, the third type of lens that people typically wear, it's the newest and kind of most advanced of the lenses, and they thought it was kind of going to be that catch-all that's going to fix everything, is called a progressive lens. So what that is, is it has the distance still and it has the reading still, but it has this transition zone of the intermediate. Um, when we have that intermediate vision, you know you're getting your computer, everything's fine. But the problem with these lenses is they're great for everyday wear, they're not really great for computer wear. The reason being is the widest portion of that lens is your distance vision and you still have to look down through a very tiny channel to look kind of up close at the computer. What happens a lot of times is people end up craning their necks back to try to get their eyes in the proper position and it's just very straining on our system and doesn't work too well. Um, one thing I have noticed with people that have these types of lenses 
is they often think that their prescription's wrong. And a lot of times it's not their prescription, it's the lens style that they have is not working for what they need it for. Like for this instance, the computer. Right. So people who maybe are wearing their cheaters or wearing their regular glasses while looking at a computer, mm -hmm. it isn't necessarily helping them just based off of where the vision is on the lens and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're just joining us, we're here at Green, uh, in Manitowoc at Bay Care Clinic Eye Specialist with Dr. Jordan King talking about computer vision syndrome. So I want to get into some of those specifics that we talked about. So if someone is experiencing what they think might be computer vision syndrome, what types of symptoms are they having? What, what are they experiencing? Okay, so computer vision syndrome, it kind of varies from person to person. It's almost like a big bucket of symptoms and everyone <laughs> picks out a little bit. Um, first and foremost, people typically complain about blurred vision. Um, it can be for a couple different factors. It can be because, like we had mentioned before with the lenses, they're, they're not set for that right distance. A little bit is off with the focusing system. Or you also can get blurred vision from dryness as well. Um, anytime we do anything concentrated, we blink significantly less. Right now, you and I are blinking roughly 12 to 16 times a minute. Our eyes are super happy. Everything's great. <laughs> but if you zone in your computer, I zone in a tablet or my phone, things like that, we cut that blinking down to about three to four a minute. Mm -hmm. Our eyes are drying out. Our eyes are not happy. Um, the dryness that kind of comes with it kind of has its range of own symptoms as well. Um, some people get the burny, gritty, sandy feeling. Some people actually can get watery eyes because our eyes are trying to compensate for the dryness. I know that sometimes can seem counterintuitive for people that if your eyes are watering excessively, they're actually really dry. But I always try to compare it almost to like if you had a house plant that <laughs> looks a little brown and was a little bit dry, you're going to give it some water and it's going to kind of help it out there. Um, and then the blurred vision component that comes with it is because our eyes are kind of built the opposite of a car windshield. Your windshield, you know, is nice and smooth, everything's great, and you can see fine, but if it rains, it makes it bumpy and you can't see out of it. Um, what happens with our eyes is they're naturally a little bit bumpy and our tears kind of fill in the gaps. So if we're not lubricating our eyes properly and they're drying out from being on the computer, you're gonna get that blurred vision. Um, another symptom that people often have is eye fatigue. Um, that can be from a couple different things. It can be from, you know, the dryness, it's just another symptom there but mainly it's from that focusing system. Um, when we're younger, we have this surplus of a focusing system and we slowly lose that as we age. We start using that from a very young age, but when we're kind of in our early 40s is when people start to notice a lot of the symptoms there. So the older we get, the worse it can kind of seem. Um, so it's just not either having enough kind of in the reserves of your focusing system or not having the proper pres uh, prescription for that intermediate distance can give you fatigue. Um, when all these kind of eye symptoms are working together, a lot of times people get headaches because your brain has a hard time kind of interpreting it. It's very stressful on the system. And then another complaint that people get a lot of times too is neck and shoulder pain. And that's directly related to having to crane your neck and move it to get it into like the perfect reading prescription for you. Um, so a lot of times people end up going to their chiropractor to try to fix it and he can fix it, you know, initially and make you feel a little bit better but then you're using your glasses still improperly and you're just kind of re -stirring. The problem's not fixed, Yeah, the right? problem's not fixed. It's kind of a band-aid for the solution. Right, and so you talked about the position of the screen, but there are other factors related to screens that, mm -hmm. that can sometimes maybe exacerbate that mm -hmm. computer vision syndrome. Mm -hmm. What other types of problems are there? Um, a big issue is kind of the lighting that you have around your computer. A lot of time overhead fluorescent lighting is a little bit straining on our eyes. It gets a lot of glare that bounces off that computer and it's kind of very distracting for us. The computer itself also has some glare that it kicks off, specifically blue light. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a lot of talk right now kind of about these computer glasses, the blue light glare mm -hmm. coating things. Um, where that comes from is blue light comes from two different sources. We have the sun and we have kind of our digital devices. Um, the blue light from the sun is a little bit more damaging. It's a little bit stronger um, and it actually can lead to some problems in your eyes such as cataracts and macular degeneration and things like that. Um, the good news is the blue light from our digital devices is nowhere near strong enough to have that happen but there has been some research where it does have eye fatigue because it's a higher energy wavelength. It messes with our circadian rhythm. It makes it harder for us sometimes to sleep at night and kind of reset our systems. Um, so that's a big factor in it as well. 
Yeah, interesting. And I, I think that's the one that, that everybody sort of recognizes mm -hmm. as this blue light and it's mm -hmm. not good for our eyes, that kind of thing. Yeah. Are there certain eye conditions that that can maybe exacerbate computer vision syndrome, like dry eye or even glaucoma or anything like yeah. that? Yeah, there's some. So the biggest one that people typically have related is some sort of ocular surface disease. This is most often related to dryness, but it can be allergies, things like that, where your front surface of your eye is already a little bit irritated, already a little bit inflamed, and then you're throwing now this dryness component on top of it. It makes it a little bit worse. It kind of kickstarts the system. Um, another big factor is that loss of your reading vision mm -hmm. um, that's called presbyopia. It naturally comes with age. Like I said, it, you know, you're slowly losing that focusing system over time. Typically kind of in your early 40s is when you start to notice it and you don't have a lot left in the tank and you kind of need to have that um, little bit of help there. One other thing that kind of happens too that I have found in my practice is a lot of my post-refractive surgery patients have had this issue. Um, specifically kind of my LASIK patients. The reason being is when you have LASIK eye surgery, they are using a laser to treat and correct for your prescription, which is fantastic. But the problem that arises is we have nerves in that inner layer that they treat, and it sends a signal to our brain when to blink. So oftentimes we end up with a little bit more dryness with the LASIK patients that can, you know, kickstart the thing and also you just had your vision corrected for it. The last thing you want is to kind of wear glasses again. So sometimes people are a little bit resistant to that blurred vision and kind of coming in and seeking mm -hmm. help. So. Absolutely. So um, I think that what everybody's wondering, and I know that there's probably tons of our viewers right now that are experiencing these symptoms. Mm -hmm. If they are experiencing symptoms of computer vision syndrome, is it causing damage to our eyes or is that damage? permanent and something mm -hmm. that we can't reverse or mm -hmm. is this you know causing detriment to the our, future of our vision, vision. yeah right. <laughs> um for the most part it's not um it's one of those things where the second you kind of stop using the computer your symptoms should go away in about five minutes to 60 minutes depending on how severe your symptoms are um the problem that can kind of arise is you know we're spending seven to eight hours on a computer every day right. most people get about i think it's six to seven hours of sleep um, so we're not giving our eyes enough time to kind of recover from these symptoms and they're already starting off, you know, in a, a deficit on the right. next day and it just becomes this very exacerbated downward spiral day after day after day if we're not kind of addressing these symptoms and getting rid of them. Right. Well, and if you're at work for seven or eight hours and then you go home and you're on your tablet, that's even less time yeah. that your eyes have to mm -hmm. recover. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. If you're just joining us, we're here at uh, Bay Care Clinic Eye Specialist in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. We're talking with Dr. Jordan King about computer vision syndrome. And we've just reviewed sort of the signs and the symptoms and maybe what people can expect from um, if they do have it or if they're experiencing that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get into what we can sort of do about it. Okay. Um, and I know there are some things on the market, but what are some things that we can do to combat or even prevent computer vision syndrome? Okay, first and foremost, going to your eye care provider and getting the most up-to-date prescription. Um, our eyes can fluctuate a little bit from year to year, so making sure everything has kind of got a good base is a starter. Um, and then also making sure that you have a lens style that's working best for you, that's addressing those intermediate concerns. Um, and the other big thing I talk about with my patients is kind of the dryness aspect. Um, there's a lot of great types of artificial tears that we can use. I know personally, I typically recommend Rubbery Fresh or a Sustain, a Theratears, um, a Blink brand. These are made by companies that are also making our contact lenses and different drugs that we use in the eye specifically. So there's a lot of research that goes into them. We can kind of really trust these products. Um, the nice part about just normal artificial tears is there's no medication in them. You can use them as many times of a day as you need to. I typically recommend three to five times a day, um, more if you're having symptoms. I know personally for me, I have a little bottle of tears right next to my computer. If I think about it or if I look down and see it, I'll go ahead and put some in just to make sure that I am lubricating my eyes properly. To kind of alleviate some of the symptoms that you'd maybe be experiencing mm -hmm. throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um, there's something out there called the 2020 rule that mm -hmm. I think people maybe have heard of yeah um, in relation to computer vision syndrome and maybe some ways to help can you explain mm -hmm. what that is for everyone um, so the 2020 rule came out and essentially what that is is every 20 minutes that you're at the computer you should take at least a 20 second break and look at something 20 feet away it's gonna give your eyes kind of a chance to reset 
um, refocus, re-energize themselves so they're not so tired at the end of it. Um, I know personally for me and for a lot of people, trying to remind yourself to do that every <laughs> 20 minutes. Thing you have to remember, yeah, yeah, you almost have to put a timer on like your phone right. or alarm clock. Right. Um, so what I typically tell people is every hour on the hour, get up, take a walk around the office, take a bathroom break, get some coffee, even just sit there at your desk with your eyes closed to give yourself kind of a second to reset. And then taking breaks every two to three hours um, for 10 to 15 minutes and really giving yourself a time, your eyes a second to kind of catch back up. To kind of recover. Very yeah. beneficial for you, yeah. Perfect. And, and you had mentioned this too, I think, during our conversation, but there are things that we can do within our workspaces as mm -hmm. well. You talked about positioning and lighting and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about that, about maybe what we can do to make it a little easier on our eyes? Since mm -hmm. most of us are probably at a computer you know, for work. I mean, yeah. we have to be on a computer, yeah. so, yeah, so you we don't really get a choice there. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we actually have a diagram too. We'll hold it up because it's a little bit harder to see. Um, but the big thing kind of with the computer is to make sure you're sitting properly. Um, you want to be sitting with a 90 degree angle between your back and your legs. You want your shoulders to be relaxed, arms bent at a 90, um, wrist kind of level with the keyboard is kind of the normal sitting posture. Mm -hmm. And then you want to make sure your screen's at the right height. I typically recommend the top of your screen to be almost at eye level for you. So that way when you're scanning your whole screen, you're going into your natural reading position of the right. a little bit downward instead of having an upward. Um, in the work environment itself, I typically recommend trying to get rid of the overhead fluorescent lightings or keeping them dimmed down. You can use a little lamp at your desk with a low wattage. Um, it just cuts down a lot of the glare issues. Um, and I know some people, we even have them here in the clinic, they have these anti-glare, almost privacy sheets mm -hmm. on their computers. So on when you the put screen on itself. the screen itself, it helps cut down kind of the glare and the issues that it's coming off and towards your eyes. Uh, you had mentioned too, just I think the level of the computer is mm -hmm. kind of important because like you said, you know, most of us, some of us actually have standing desks or mm -hmm. anything like that. So making sure that wherever your desk is, mm -hmm. that the, the top of the computer screen is, is level with your eyes so that you're looking down in mm -hmm. our natural reading position. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Are there um, other glasses or things on the market? Mm -hmm. What can we believe? I know there's things where you mentioned like blue light glasses, that kind of thing. Um, are there devices that we can wear on our faces to help mm -hmm. correct these issues? And, and when be what for some of those? Yeah, um, so a lot of companies now have been starting to come out with their own line of computer lenses because this is such a big concern for people. Um, and there's kind of a couple different types. Um, it really depends on what I recommend is kind of what age group you're in. If you're under about age 40, you still have your focusing system and you're just looking for a little bit of help, um, the iZen lens, is, Zen lens is probably the best for you. What that is, it's a normal single vision lens, but it has some relaxing plus power in the bottom half of it, so we don't have to work as hard and we don't have to focus okay. as long. Um, on the plus side, it also has that blue anti-reflective coating on the front of the lens as well that cuts down some glare. And we actually have kind of a diagram of anti-reflective coating as well. Um, as you can tell, the woman on the left, you're having a hard time seeing her eyes. Um, and then the woman on the right has that anti-reflective coating. So it really cuts down the glare and it cuts down the amount of unwanted light that's kind of getting through your lenses. Um, any anti-glare coating works well. For digital devices, we typically try to go with the blue light blocking ones because okay. it's a little bit more specific. Um, when it comes to kind of the older population that needs that little bit help up close, there's actually a lens called the Eye Relax lens. It's more of an advanced progressive lens where it still has that little bit of distance, that intermediate near, but it shifts it all up for you. So the majority of your vision is kind of that computer intermediate distance. The bottom half is going to be that reading and the very tippy top is going to be a little bit of that distance. It's great for people that want to wear these lenses kind of at the office mm -hmm. because you have, you know, your computer and your reading and everything's fine. But if you want to get up um, and walk around or you need to address things, you can either look up through that top portion or you can even slide your lenses down a little bit and you're able to get around the office very easily with that. Fantastic. So there's mm -hmm. definitely things that people can yeah, do. Yeah, there are definitely things we can do. And I think you, you talked about this a little, but I do want to address one question that mm -hmm. came in. 
So this is something that affects literally everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're working on a computer, you're on a phone or a tablet, mm -hmm. you've probably experienced some symptoms of computer vision syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, as we age, those symptoms can sometimes feel worse because of just the natural progression of our eyes, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like we had mentioned, it kind of affects anyone that's at the computer, but as we lose that focusing system, as our eyes tend to get a little bit drier, as we get older, things like that, we are more symptomatic and we have more factors playing into kind of computer vision syndrome that just kind of brings it one step ahead of where we were when we were a little bit younger. Um, there's still plenty of my patients that I'm dealing with it that are 18, 19 years old, but I'd say the majority of the people are kind of after age 40 still in that working age that are really being bothered by kind of working at the, the symptoms may day. seem worse just yeah. because of other things that are going, going on, on. With our the eyes. loss of their focusing system right. the dryness and things like that are often a little bit worse at those ages interesting mm -hmm. um so that brings me to my next question is this something that an eye doctor can diagnose and you mm -hmm. talked about going and seeing your eye doctor and those kinds of things is this mm -hmm. something they can diagnose and help patients with if they're experiencing those types of symptoms? Yeah, absolutely your eye doctor can help you with these things. Um, one thing that I'd almost like to stress about is that we're here to give you comfortable and clear vision and make sure your eyes are healthy. Um, with that comes, you need to come through the door and kind of let us know about all your symptoms. I know a lot of times I'll ask my patients, do you have any complaints? And they'll tell me no. And then as we kind of talk about their vision and how they use their eyes, they realize, wait, this isn't normal, they, right. we can fix this, we can do that. So just having a kind of in good, honest conversation with your eye doctor, going into them regularly, bringing up your concerns and just talking about it, there's a lot that we can do for you and help you out with. And I think that's important because I think a lot of times people just sort of explain it away as this is just, you know, the nature of our jobs now and mm -hmm. this is what we do, but mm -hmm. there is help for you. There if you absolutely go and see is. Yeah. Your Everyone kind of just writes off this right. is just what it is. And now. it has to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be. You never know how comfortable your eyes could be. So, right. fantastic. Uh, well, we've learned so much today. Is there anything that you want to add or anything that um, you think maybe we missed? No, I think we covered it all. Um, for the most part, every doctor has a little bit different style for how they deal with things. Um, so at least we got you kind of a good base for things. If you have more questions, feel free to reach out to me um, or reach out to your eye care provider for them as well. Perfect. Uh, we'll continue to answer your questions online. If you want to learn more about computer vision syndrome or Bay Care Clinic eye specialists, visit us by clicking on the link in this post. Or if you'd like to request an appointment, you can do so online by visiting baycare.net. Thanks for joining us and have a great day. Bye. <laughs>